Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Gonna be doing something a little different in this video. You can already tell the voice is a little bit different. So I'm not really in a situation that can kind of do that sensitive of a voice. There's gonna be a lot of ambient noise, not a lot of ambient noise, but if I were to do that sensitive of a voice, then yes, there would be a lot of ambient noise. So we're just gonna do this. We're gonna vibe, have a good time, same as usual. Just gonna be not, I guess, whispering. But yeah. It's a lot we got to talk about in this market. Um, it's been interesting these last few weeks. I think it's been like a month since we last chatted. So it the market's been kind of doing what we intended, or at least I intended. It's been pretty much falling. I thought we were going to kind of have a rally up and down, but we kind of, we're coming up a little bit, but we did spill over this trend line. I think we do very easily get to this trend line where, I mean, we were almost there, but yeah, we'll see. I think we probably kiss 400 and then keep heading down a little bit more i've been buying um we could talk definitely about that in a second but my i think we hit 300 potentially like longer term maybe end of this year maybe in a year and a half i don't know but 300 maybe but definitely this trend line i think we do kind of come down to respect um yeah you might even say that's actually worthless i'm trying to think now hmm maybe 350 but i think maybe 300 to 325 is a range we probably will hit uh i don't think we go as low as that trend line here right like that's super super low but if it did get there i think the probability of bouncing is so high so yeah but i've been buying so i'll go through i did buy some more uranium we can kind of talk about that too but uranium coming down to this trend line we're having this like expanding volatility sort of so this i mean i don't want to say it, it's 100 percent going to go up but i think it's a higher probability that we probably go to the upside out of this channel eventually but this expanding volatility is a little bit concerning this pattern technically does indicate that it probably is going to go up past this but so there's a chance it spills over um yeah i actually did buy some foot locker my buy price was at 25 bucks. I was hoping it would get there, and it did. 25.13 is where it got to, I think, last Friday. These are all weekly candles. So pretty exciting. I think I bought it like 26, though. I didn't really, you know, I wasn't at the computer all day waiting for it to hit my target price. But yeah, cool. Dropping a little bit. Intel did drop a lot. We we're, we're down a lot. <laughs> no way other way to put it it kind of stinks because it's like oh i could have just bought lower but at the same time you know don't know where it's going but i like the price and the value so to me it's okay could still go down but i think we'll see what happens average price right now is 48.68 so we're down a pretty significant amount um what was i gonna say yeah the whole market is obviously just going down no doubt about it so if you look at the p l it's pretty I feel like it could get to your head. I don't look at it. I just say these things are cheap. I'm buying or cheap is relative and it's from a point of view, but from the point of view that I've already laid out paper, things are cheap at these certain prices and I want these assets. I'm gonna pick them up slowly. I think I'm at like maybe 17, 15 to like 17% cash, just doing a really quick estimate. Um maybe less. I'm trying to think. No, definitely not 15. It's like maybe 13 to 12 to 13%. Just doing a quick estimate. Uh, I had like maybe 20% a few weeks ago, but just been dumping into a lot of stuff. Did not buy 3M, but I probably might add a little bit. They're getting really cheap. Dividend's nice, but the um, the company itself just has a lot of debt. You know, thing that's negative for me. All these companies kind of have a lot of debt. It's kind of annoying. Intel does not have that much debt, though. New addition to the team is Snap-on, ticker SNA. I did not really buy too much yet. My buy price is like 170. Um, still gonna fall like 15%. I do like it. I like it a lot. There's some really good fundamentals and financials I'm in this with this company. The, the valuation is a little high compared to how much growth. Like the PE itself is like maybe I think 13, 12, depending on what number you want to look at. <sighs> Whew. Just talking too much. But the thing is, even though it's a low PE, relatively, it's a low growth company. We're not expecting that much growth in this company the next few years, so you have to put a lower multiple on it. Um, yeah, I mean, 
it's still pretty solid and I'm willing to pay a slightly higher multiple for this company. We could do a whole kind of breakdown on this channel about it, but maybe we already did. I think we already did. Solid company, low debt, buying back a lot of shares, paying good dividend. They can increase it substantially. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Smith & Wesson, I think I did pick up a little bit more shares before earnings. Um, not a whole lot. I'm down a lot in this. I'm at 20 bucks briefly, so what are we down? 30%. Getting smoked. I don't think I... I might have added more to Quadruple U. Walgreens, I added a lot at these lower prices, especially when it started dipping below 40 because like 45 was what do you call it? 45 i was like if it goes below there start picking it up start picking it up now for i started buying a lot at like 40 41 dollars so that is exciting then look at this one two three four they will 100 100 percent like 80 90 i give 95 percent confidence that they will increase their dividend don't know how much but they will definitely increase it um, they they can they make a good amount of free cash flow um, so yeah, I think they, they will. We'll see what happens. Actually, when do they announce their dividend? They should be doing it like within the next few days. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, I think that's really it. I feel like I did a lot more buying with that. I was kind of eyeing up Target the other day. Uh, I think it still could fall a little bit more. Just they got a good amount of debt and already have some other companies with a good amount of debt. So kind of just picking and choosing what companies I want. We'll go through the watch list really quick. I haven't actually looked at Bitcoin in a while, but that's sheesh. that's a nightmare. Crude. I haven't looked at crude, but I guess it hasn't really been doing anything anyway. Actually, wow. There it is. The pattern I was looking for. The expanding volatility. I'm so dumb. I was trying to find a pattern that looked like CCJs with the expanding volatility with the rising support. And it's right in crude. I can't believe I didn't see that before. Huh. Expanding volatility shoots up. Uses it as a support. Wow. I am dumb. Okay. Gold and silver hanging out in these zones. It is interesting how... Take a look at this. You know, gold is basically where it has been May last year. Let's go to something like NEM. Nah, it's about the same. NEM. It, you know, it did pull back a lot too, but... Yeah, gold and silver has been not a good investment right now. I mean, I still have all my gold and silver stuff. I didn't really liquidate, but like KGC, this has fallen to like 52-week lows. But we are on monthly candles at this kind of grind line. I can't believe we're back here. It's almost like I want to buy more because of the zone it's in, but I don't really want to dump more money in this because, again, I like keeping things as a percentage to the whole portfolio, and I I just want to buy other assets. I don't really want to add more to this stuff, but it almost looks kind of appetizing. Go down to silver real quick. So silver's actually dipping below. Wow. Below, oh, the market did open, though, for silver. What is... Oh, it's... So right now, wait, why is, I'm so confused. What is today? Seven, four, oh, I guess silver. Yeah, around the world, it does get traded, obviously. Um, just tomorrow is 4th of July. I guess this video will go out tomorrow night. So 4th of July night. But yeah, silver market is open. See, Apple, Apple, eh, I don't know. I think they could fall a lot more. AMD is getting obliterated. Uh, AMAT, Applied Materials. Baba, I haven't really looked at these in a while. Clorox, kind of just refreshing my memory. Corsair is just getting so cheap. Like, we're the cheapest it's probably ever been. 13 bucks, it's finding some support. Crouch Strike could take off. I had these because I was making a video. I wanted to discuss some other stuff. The Dow, I think Dow 260 is very likely definitely retest 300 again but i think dow 260 is a good number oh emerging market tr etf coming back to this like huge bottom trend line jd i can't believe the jdx is this low i cannot believe it kind of looks like um it probably should hold there but 
Yeah. Still didn't pick up any Google. Um, no particular reason. I think it would just... There, not that there's other asset, better assets. I think Google's, from a stock point of view, is ridiculous. But I want to be patient for 200. And I guess... Where one is this? This split is in like 10 days. So definitely I'll be buying then because I feel more... I feel better than just, you know, dumping a huge position. A huge is all relative, right? But just dumping a big position in. So I'll be picking it up definitely when it starts splitting because it's... It'll just be a lot easier to buy. Mm, let's see. JP Morgan. I think I get interested at like a hundred bucks. This was a good trade though back here. I think we bought it on this move. I don't remember. It was one of these, either here to here or here to here. Uh, either, but I think it's the same percentage. Nope, it was definitely this one because it was more than 10%. So coal is getting destroyed too. Um, two, three. I don't know how I feel about this. Like they were gonna get bought out, then they weren't, then they were, and they're gonna get bought out. I don't know, but it's so cheap. It's just, it's, it could remain cheap, you know? It's, they got a pretty good dividend and stuff, but, and I, if I did the math right, they can pay it. It's just, you know, where's this company going in 10 years? I don't know. Same thing with like Foot Locker. Like, I don't know where it's going to be in 10 years, but I think having one of those in the portfolio is okay. Just, I'm not going to have both Kohl's and Foot Locker. Oh, Logitech. Wow. It's at 50 bucks. No way. This actually looks really, it looks like a giant mountain. This has not had a break in like a whole year. Definitely got way too expensive up here. I, I actually do like Logitech and now it's at these prices. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Oh man, I gotta talk to my friend about this. So I gotta make a note or something. Logitech is looking spicy. And then video, we're just watching. And that could still fall a good amount. Oh, Realty, man, it has not really broken that. You can really tell people are liking this stock. Hope it goes to 60, but man, that is a lot of support for this stock at 65 bucks. A lot. Uh, PayPal is still on there. Quadruple Q or Triple Q. We're kind of hovering at 280. I think we could very easily see 250 here. Eventually, I'm going to take snap on us now that we got it in the portfolio. Simon property. Same thing. Like, these things are just getting so cheap. This thing got cut in half, basically. They're earning about three bucks per share. That's $12. 12 divided by 100. Uh, 10 divided. Yeah, that's actually a pretty low PE, though. PE on here, they're saying a 14. Hmm. That's actually a pretty high yield too. 1.7 times four. Let's see for a hundred bucks, about a 6.8. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Like at what price did these things just start getting super appetizing because of the yield? I don't know. Same thing, stag. I, 30 bucks. I said I was gonna start buying, but it hits 30, and it's 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 the same thing. It's all relative. Like, why why would I buy stag with a dividend of was it like four something percent when I could buy Walgreens same dividend, but I don't get a ta it gets taxed at like a lower percentage, and it's just um yeah from a pe evaluation point of view i still think walgreens is superior to stag so stag i think has got a f so stag below 30 and walgreens has to be above like 40 45 for me to justify buying stag but at the same time like it's again it's a different company different kind of market but it's 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 the same thing like if, if i can buy this company why would i buy the other one and for me from a value point of view why would i buy stag and i could just buy walgreens but i guess you could say the same thing like target like I kind of would, I wouldn't mind Target, but why would I do that when I could buy the other company? And I guess, again, it's some, not the same company, but from a value point of view again. Uh, take two, 
I hope it comes back down to here, like below 110, even 100 would be spicy. Mm, it's not that I, I almost like it at these prices. It's just, I think I'm greedy and I want it lower. Maybe not greedy, I think just patient. Whirlpool, I, I was getting interested in, um, again, nice dividend and stuff, but like, same thing. They just got so much debt, so can't have too many companies with a lot of debt. At least for me in the portfolio, oh, XLE dropped off a cliff, pull back 20%. I mean, it needed a pull back anyway. It was on a, what is this? From here to here is 80% move. Yeah, I mean, definitely a lot of stuff to watch. A lot of opportunities are, you know, coming out in the market. And the same thing, like, the market's probably still going to fall a good amount. But, like, things like, oh, hasn't moved again. It's, it depends on the... the not this, I guess sector, yeah, the sector and like companies, individual companies in the market, but you can kind of see the quality ones. Like, oh, pretty quality. It hasn't moved. It's um, stable because of how people view it. But at the same time, is there an opportunity here? I don't know. But then I look, go look at Logitech and I'm like, oh, wow, that thing already ripped down a lot. It's getting to a pretty fair multiple. Sure, the spec, yeah, wow. This kind of gets into a big conversation. Like... People, I feel like, don't want actually. Sorry, my thoughts are over the place. I have to go look at the research. I can't show it in a video because it's just not like proper etiquette. But there's research from Yardini. He shows all the S and P, or there's a specific research that I'm pinpointing to where he shows all the S and P uh, valuations for the certain companies. And I want to see where the small and mid caps are relative to the large caps and see where the overall market is valuing from a PE perspective, like comparing those market cap sizes. Because these got so cheap, like, it's like, yeah, wow. Hmm. I got I wish I had like a pencil and pen near me so I could start making some notes, I guess. Nah, whatever. Um, some things that moved a lot, let's see. Actually, I haven't really scanned a lot in a while. Is that pull back to there? Nice. Pull back to 75 Etsy. Mm, I'm just gonna scan spaces. Super sad. Amazon. Yeah, Amazon had the split bounce back at a hundred. Um, I'm gonna go to my investing list. Caterpillar. Huh? It actually hasn't moved that much. Let's see, Clorox, Corsair, Disney, Disney. This is a very sad story. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's just not something I want to chat about, but they're interesting. HP, probably not going to end up buying again because I don't see the point of owning this and Intel at the same time. J&J &J really has held its value. Cools Lockheed. Uh, yeah, I can't believe I, not that I sold, I sold Lockheed, but it's just funny how I sell it, then it rips up even faster, higher, and it holds, the Pepsi is so expensive, oh my gosh, I want to see if this is right, they're saying a PE of 22, no, it's definitely higher than that, the last time I checked, like, actually checked, it was, I think, like, 25, 26, Procter Gamble, I think we can still see it fall a lot. It's just too expensive. Stack. Store capital, I'm probably not going to buy. There's just other things to buy. Uh, take two. I feel like I'm missing some companies that it should be on that list. I'll put Target on the list just in case. I don't even think, I don't think this will save. Um... The uranium stuff I do like, especially on this huge pullback. It's just, again, if, I'm, if I think the market's going to fall a little bit more, it's buying these speculative things a little hard, especially my right now my investing mindset's like I want to just buy things with, that are a good dividend, a good company paying a good, just pretty stable dividend. And again, we do the uh, analysis on that. So it's not like I'm just looking at the dividend and buying it. Making sure the company is pretty solid. But... I kind of want to, set, if the market is falling, I want to set myself up for like a comfortable point of view for the next few years, like buy these good companies at a pretty good position or like a price, which is, I guess, the position. 
that's kind of my, I guess, thought process right now. Um, but then I look at things like Logitech, and it's like, this could be such a good opportunity. Again, could it fall more? Of course. Could definitely fall more, but I'm saying... Man, it's getting so cheap. I sort of liked it, like 70 bucks. But now that it's dropped even more, like another 25%. I gotta go back to, hopefully I didn't delete that analysis. I don't, I, I don't think I should have. Actually, maybe we'll go to that now. Okay, we're sort of at the sheet. I think this is it. Logitech. This has not been updated in a while, so what will... Evaluation? Yeah, I did do evaluation, okay. Perfect, I did do it. Nice. So current price is 51, even with a 15%. Huh. Interesting. So for my analysis for 2026, I'm looking at about a billion in revenue. Future PE about 14 to 22. Maybe even if we cut this to like 12. Hold on a minute. If I'm expecting a PE of 10 in the future. Okay, then that's where I get, but 10 is so low, especially with this type of a, with this growth company. If I'm expecting 2026, a PE of 12 on that predicted money. Yeah, so interesting. Interesting. So in 2026, they're expecting 7 billion revenue, 17% margins. I did 14% margins on 5.2 billion. Sorry. 14% margins on 5 point or 6.6. .6, so a little bit less margins and a little bit less, less whatever. So I, I assume it's 6% revenue growth. Already dialing that back and putting a very low multiple on the, the future valuation of this company and putting a 15% margin of safety, I can expect, I think very, very conservatively an 11% return in the near future. So... That is also not including the fact that they have literally, literally no debt. Huh. Ah, jeez, I hate when I do this. I find companies that I want to buy more. Or, yeah. Three year PE. Go over here. Three year PE of 13. That's fresh, too. That's fresh. Like, they just ended their 2022 quarter. That's possible. Man, All right, I think again, not a buy recommendation, but looking spicy. Um, I quickly will go to my snap on analysis. So, why is this so bad? What, what happened here? That's right, this is not right. That's this needs to be, where is this coming from? 11 to market cap. What is this number? Am I being dumb? Divide it by this. Is that it? Nope. I'll go up. It needs to be, yes, divided by the shares. Of course, of course. Divided by the shares. Oops. Bear with me, you know, you're just trying to figure it out. Do the same thing here. So this is from Snap-on. I needed to fall like probably to 170 is how, kind of how I got here. They are paying good dividend. I'm will. This is again on the low end, super low end of 11 PE. I'm willing to pay a little bit more specifically because their great balance sheet. We can go a little bit over there right now. Great working capital. Buying back some shares, actually, yeah, from, so it doesn't look like a lot, 55 to 53, but that's like four or 5% of the company easily. Very little debt compared to the working capital. We go here, good current ratio, good debt to equity, great working capital, great balance sheet. Pretty good multiple, but again, we have to take the revenue growth into consideration. They're not gonna be growing that much. Great payout ratio. They can very easily pay it and increase the dividend. Look at this dividend increase too. Willing to pay more for a company like this. Yeah, very hard to find these, to be honest. But again, we're, we're and how am I getting these numbers? They expect the revenue growth. I have a website, and they they get from S and P Global, I think, all the analyst expectations and stuff, and that's how they get that number. And they're expecting like three percent growth, 
year over year or compound annual growth rate. So that's just how I got that. But yeah, looking pretty spicy. And the fact that they pay a dividend too, got to factor that, factor that into the entire return on the company. Also, another great thing yet, yeah, the C, I don't know how what that percentage is, but the CEO, the owner of Snap-on owns like, I mean, like a massive amount of shares of this company. Again, this company's got like 50 million shares outstanding. And he just owns a lot. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know how much. I'm not going to speculate. I could look it up, but don't feel like doing that right now. So, yeah. Let's take two. Is take two in the zone? So take two, I put a pretty big margin of safety on. I think it's a little bit more speculative. Actually, I guess I could go back to... Oops. 15%. What the heck is going on over here? I think I broke it. 15% margin of safety. Yeah, that's why I want up definitely below like 115. I want in the 100 to 110 area, but even then, I'm at, I'm a, it's a growth company. Yeah. These are getting cheap. That's all I'm really going to say. So, anyway, though, I think I'm going to wrap this video up. Hopefully, you kind of enjoyed it. If you like this, I guess better than what we usually do let me know um i will be obviously returning to the other style video soon it's just i really wanted to get a video out chat about some stuff because so you guys don't forget about me but yeah let me know always good to experiment here and there hopefully you still found it kind of chill I'll probably add some music in the background because i already paid for the songs and stuff so i might as well put it to good use and it's a beautiful song too beautiful vibes anyway Take care, everybody. Have a good week. And I guess maybe a week or two, but stay safe, you know. Buy some good stuff that you think is worth money. Now, this was obviously buy recommendations or anything, but just food for thought. Maybe to get your brain working or relaxation, I guess, depending on how you want to. Yeah. Anyway, I always do that. Talk too much at the end of the video. Take care. See you later. Peace.